Hi there, and welcome to Basically Long Arm Quilting, featuring the Innova Autopilot Mach 3. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at mask using continuous sew to create a beautiful background pattern around your appliques, embroideries, or anything else that you have that you want to work around in the block. So let's take a look. So looking at how mask works, um, we're looking at this with this block that we're working on right now. And I have an applique in the center of this block um, that we're going to put something in a little bit later. However, I want to do some background quilting out here to kind of accentuate the applique um, and the pattern that I'll be working with inside of it. So what I want to do is I want to draw a boundary around this outer portion of this block so I can place in my background pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my computer screen and click my boundary function. And I want to do this boundary with an input of sew head um, and then our method of morph to fit will be great. So I'm going to head back to my machine and you'll notice on both the screen and on the quilt how the clicking process is going to work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start up here at the um, upper left section of my block and I'll be using my right handle button to place my points. And remember boundaries are only a four click process. You only need four points to do it. Um, so I'm going to press my right handle button. I'm going to come down to the bottom left of my square, right handle button, bottom right of the square, right handle button, and top right of the square right handle button. And as we notice on the screen, it has grayed out that section and it's given us our boundary to work from. So we're going to go ahead and click on done because we're happy with what we've done. And I'm going to go search for the background pattern that I want to use. So I'm going to go in my pattern library and I'm going to be looking for a Linda Taylor fill pattern. Um, so I'm going to go and search by tag. So I've selected by tag and I'll scroll down to the bottom of my list and I've got Linda Taylor. I'll select that tag and I'm going to search and it's going to bring up the patterns that I have tagged with her. Um, we're going to be using this bubbles fill pattern. So I'm going to double left click on that and then we'll be using this caterpillar um, fleather uh, six point pattern that she's got for the center. So I'll go ahead and add that to my pad too. So I've got both of those patterns on my pattern pad. I'm going to go ahead and close my pattern pad. And here I'm going to take my pattern and I'm going to drag and drop it into the boundary box that I have. Now we've done our boundary with a quarter inch margin. Might want to make that a little bit smaller. Of course you can always do that beforehand, but I like to show you just in case you forgot how to change it. So you can right click on your boundary and at the very top you can go to boundary, resize margin, and let's do a tenth of an inch on this one. Hit set and then click on the pattern one more time and it will then uh, pop out to hit that margin that we've made. I'm going to click on my stretchy man, my transform icon, and this is what I'm going to see. Now, to talk about fill patterns real quick, let's back up just a second. The best type of fill pattern or mask pattern, if you're wanting to do a continuous sew, is a pattern that stitches into the center and then back out again. Because normally what you want to mask away is going to be in the center of your block, your applique, an embroidery piece, um, however you want. So let's take a look at how this pattern is actually going to stitch. Um, so I can go right down here uh, to this little machine that says Sew Options. I can click on this. It's going to highlight the pattern. And right over here on the right hand side, we see Sewing Preview. And we can start that. And it's going to show you how this pattern is going to stitch. So watch and see how it's going to come in to the center. And we can speed it up even if we want to. And back out again. It's going to go into the center, back out again. Now having that benefit of into the center and back out again is going to use the least amount of space on your applique to do the little bit of stitch in the ditch that it has to do to continue on to the next piece to keep the continuous sewing. So having one of these patterns that go in and back out are really going to help you um, with that process. So we can close out of this. And then what I'm going to do is also I need to create a push pin uh, pattern or block or boundary around the applique that I have in the center. So I'm going to go back to the quilt 
and I'm going to take my machine, and my left handle button is going to be my placing of my push pins. And especially when you're doing a mask, uh, the more points that you click, the better, uh, just to be more accurate. So we're going to click these around by just by pressing that left handle button. We'll work around our little shape that we have here. Just like so. And always try to come to a stopping point before you take your click so you don't know exactly where it's going to be. Coming all the way around, and we're just almost done right over here. Just like that. Now, on your lightning stitch screen, you also have a done button uh, with, next to a push pin, so we can click on that, and that will then close out that uh, push pin drawing that we have. Uh, I like to go back into the push pin function just to get rid of all the blue dots. So I'm going to do remove all on the pins. Our line is still there that we've drawn, um, but the pins are gone. So what I can do, let's hop back into transform. I need to unlock this drawing that we've made. So right click on it, go to unlock. Now it's red, so it means we can really use it. I'm going to go ahead and left click on it to select it and have it ready for the mask. So I have it selected. I'm going to come into my mask tool. And since I've already selected a piece that I've drawn on my quilt, I'm going to go to Build. It's going to highlight it this kind of lavender purple color. Um, you'll want to click on it one more time. Now it's going to be red. Now that it's red, we'll click on the pattern that we want to mask away. And it's going to let me know that I have my push pin mask selected. I have my pattern selected. I want to do a continuous sew because I want to keep this stitching continuously. And the masking is what we want to get rid of, so mask style. So if I want to mask away something, think about putting a patch on it. So what do I want to get a patch away? Do I want to get uh, put a patch or tape or mask away this inside of this piece, or do I want to mask the outside? Well, I want to be doing the stitching that's in the background, so I don't want to do outside. I want to do inside because I want to get rid of what's inside this red box that I've drawn. So inside selected, I can go to accept. And just like that, it has done our mask. So we can um, hop out back to our transform tool. And you'll see that it has that built just like so right there ready for us to stitch. So let's go ahead and stitch this background piece. Um, and then we'll go in and put something fun here in the center. So I'll go and save my project just in case never hurts to do another save. And then we're going to click go. And we'll head on over to the quilt. We'll click on continue. Okay, we have a preview image on the screen showing us what it's going to stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and that's going to let me know I need to take a single stitch to pull up my bobbin thread. So I'll pull up my threads. I'm going to hold those threads nice and taut and I'm going to press continue on my screen. You can see it's going to come in, use a little bit of that applique, and then continue moving on. Um, so it's always really important that when you are clicking out your points around your applique that you do more um, so it's a little bit more accurate for you uh, when it's doing its mask. So it's going to work around and do this background quilting. Um, super cute, super fast, and it's going to look absolutely great. Alrighty, it's working around its last little portion here that it has to do. As it's coming in, really, really pops that um, applique piece that you have there in the center when you do background quilting like this uh, with your mask feature. So it's going to come off, it's going to do its tie-off stitches to finalize that off. Once that's done, I can pull some thread back away, come back, take a single stitch where it stopped, back up again, and trim my bobbin thread away. Now I talked about at the beginning of the episode how we're also going to put something in this applique piece uh, just so it's not blank, um, and also show you another uh, cool feature with your um, crosshair tool that you've got. So since we're here, I'm going to go ahead and tap on OK, 
And I want to go ahead and use my push pins again to draw out this little piece. So using your left handle button, we'll start up here. I'll turn my laser light back on so I can get a good accurate clicking. I'm gonna click a point here, left handle button. Come on over here. Over here, and you're just gonna work around this section as you go, just in case there was um, any shrinkage um, in the quilting um, or in the block, you can always uh, depend on new clicking points as opposed to working off of ones that are already from the screen. Come on back here. All right, so we're gonna tap done on our screen and head back over to our computer screen. So if we zoom in just to talk about shrinkage real quick, you can see how off it is a little bit. That's how much shrinkage we had in this block. So if I would have relied on the previous quilting, the block that I might put in might be a little bit smaller and would have um, accidentally quilted into something else or not exactly where I needed it to be. So let's go into push pins. Let's remove them out of the way. And let's also right click on the push pin that we just drew, the pattern push pin that we just drew and unlock this, because we're gonna use it for something. And I'm gonna come into my pattern library, look for another pattern by Linda Taylor, um, a six petal uh, feather that we actually already have in our pattern pad, so that's good, totally forgot we put that one in there. Um, so we're gonna be using this uh, Caterpillar uh, Fleather six petal, and I'm gonna just drop this onto the screen, and I'll go into my transform tool, that's what allows me to move things around. And I'm gonna get this set where I'd like it, and I'm going to rotate this because this is a six petal design, it will fit within our um, six point hexagon that we have. So I'm gonna grab this little circle here that appears off to the right, and I'm just gonna rotate this pattern for it to fit in this block. So I'm gonna get that exactly where I want it, give or take, it's all personal preference at this point. Have that set where I'd like it. Um, if I wanna pop, uh, fill it out just a little bit more, I can set this here, grab one of these outer squares, kinda fill it up just a tad bit more, completely personal preference. Um, now the reason we unlocked our push pin pattern that we drew was I wanna be able to use our pattern crosshairs to get everything lined up. So I wanna select that push pin pattern that we draw and just left click on it. Turn on your pattern crosshair to get a center point. Select that fleather that we have turn on its pattern crosshair, and what I can do is then drag that feather to where those center points match up, just like so. And now I know it's in the perfect center of this hexagon applique that we have. So I've got that set there. It's green, which means it's gonna stitch. So let's go ahead and save our project, and click go. It's going to build the profile for it, um, whenever I see the continue button, I'll click that. The machine's going to go ahead and move to its starting location. Once I see the preview of the image on the screen, it lets me know, take a single stitch, pull up my threads, hold these nice and taut, press continue. And I'm gonna be close here, and I'm gonna be ready to hit pause, trim my threads away, and then hit continue again on my screen. into the quilt. Just like that, that block is done. So what we're gonna do is push the machine away, come back in to the point, take a single stitch, pull up our thread, and trim those threads away. Tap OK on your screen. And just like that, you've created that beautiful block with mask. Thank you so much for joining me today and learning more about how mask with continuous sew works with those patterns that stitch to the center and back out again to create a beautiful background quilting pattern. I'll see you next time on Basically Long Arm Quilting.